Hi everyone, what's up? Well, today's video, as I did promise last week, I was going to be making a new Mythbuster video on the Camel Spider. Now, I decided to withhold it because I was trying to research as much information that I can about the Camel Spider, and there's really not that much information available on the internet. So I'm going to be making a video of how much do I know about it based on my experience with uh, my own camel spider that I got during uh, the expo video back in November. So, so there's other species too. I'm only limiting to the ones that I've worked with. So I'm going to go over um, what are basically solifugids. Are they true spiders or are they scorpions? What are they? I'm going to go over the localities where you can actually find them. Believe it or not, there's actually some that are in Canada, believe it or not. I'm going to go over the common names of what they typically call solifugids because not many people know about them. Um, I'm going to go over my specimen, the Egyptian camel spider called the Galeodes granti. Talk about the common names and there's actually several of them I'll be showing you on petbugs.com site. Uh, typical sizes that you'll see, uh, how to distinguish a male and a female, although this might not be properly done, I'm still working on how to sex one. Uh, talk about where you can actually find them and unfortunate news about them being well caught. Uh, temperament, uh, care requirements, pretty much everyone wants to know about those. Uh, breeding, Unfortunately, there's no breeding information available on camel spiders, so um, I'm not going to go over breeding that much. And personal recommendations, are they worth getting or not? Or would, you, would I recommend them for a beginner hobbyist? Okay, so let's have a look at my camel spider. So as you've probably seen on my November Expo video, I purchased this this lovely camel spider for a nice low price of 50 bucks. Now, the big ultimate question is what are they? Are they spiders or are they scorpions? Well, the answer is neither. These are arachnids, however, they belong to a specific order known as Solifugae which are known as solifugids. They resemble spiders in the fact that they do have eight legs that you can typically see in a spider. You can see all the legs as you see in a T. But also they resemble um, scorpions in the sense of their chloroceri. Now if you look closely at the chloroceri of a camel spider, uh, see if I can try to go a close-up here you can see they have jaws typically seen in mole scorpions as you know tarantulas don't have jaws they have the fangs and this is how they eat their prey now the most interesting thing about solifugids is that they are non-venomous meaning that they don't don't have venom like a tarantula needs the venom to actually um, kill the prey, liquefy their entire body, and eat it up like a s stew. Scorpions really don't need venom that much because uh, they just really use it to stun the prey. Um, for example, Pandinus Imperator, the Emperor Scorpion, just uses its massive claws to actually eat them. Same thing with uh, Solifugids. If you saw my recent feeding video, feeding video 99, all it does, it grabs the cricket with its uh, two front legs and it tears it with its chloroceri. Awesome. Now, the common names of typically what are known as solifugids, people call them, I've seen the most popular one, is a camel spider. Uh, they are also known as sun spiders because they're typically seen in deserts as well as wind scorpions. Pretty interesting fact. Now the localities, believe it or not, well uh, they do come from 
the desert regions, uh, especially around Egypt, as this specimen was found. Uh, they're actually found in uh, parts of uh, the United States, like, for example, California. And there are also, believe it or not, some salfuges that exist in Canada. Well, not in my province of Quebec, because uh, Quebec is really a cold climate and it can't really sustain a um, salafugid life form. But I'll show you on arachnoboards. I'll, I'll put this up in the video description if anyone's interested in it. This is a salafugid that is originating from British Columbia. Very interesting. You can see how they have the chlorocyri, just as you would see in a scorpion, and they have the legs typically seen in a spider, and as well as the abdomen too. Very cool. And this is how they eat. They use their powerful chlorocyri to rip apart, rip apart their crickets. Okay. So this is the scientific name of my specimen. Uh, this is called a Galeodes granti. And this is how we say it. Galeo, like Galileo, Dees, granti, or some people like to pronounce it granti. Now the common name is commonly called as I like to call it, the giant camel spider or the Egyptian giant salafugid. But as I've seen in pet bug site, you are also named the following. Okay, here we go. Banded salafugid, banded sun spider, banded wind scorpion, banded camel spider, Egyptian banded sun spider, Egyptian banded wind scorpion, Egyptian banded camel spider. Wow, <laughs> the names escaped me. This is, this is typically why I hate common names and I prefer the scientific names since they're so easy to uh, figure out. Wow, <laughs> okay. Now about the sizes. They actually are pretty large arachnids. So is, if you saw my expo video, you probably seen the largest one in the um, video. Uh, let's see. It was actually in a deli container very similar to this and the thing covered the whole thing. So it was a, at least a good 5 to 6 H lake span. Now my specimen is much more smaller so as you probably heard the reason why I chose a smaller one uh, because I wanted it to live longer uh, because I knew the larger one was a lot more older and I just wasn't sure because it's a wild-caught specimen. Pretty unique, nice. Okay, so, um, male, no, well, first of all, yeah. They're imported occasionally, however, unfortunately, they're not available as captive bred uh, specimens, partly because there's really no breeding uh, of Solifugids seen, or at least the ones that I know of. So unfortunately, you're going to have to risk in buying a cat of wild-caught specimen. And with wild-caught specimens, the um, risk that you're going to be seeing is unknown ages, so you don't really know how old it is. This is why I avoided the larger one, because I really thought it might have been too old, and I don't know how long it would last in my care as well as some of them may imp you get parasites from wild caught specimens but unfortunately or fortunately rather uh, this is really rare and if you look closely you can actually see in their jaws kind of like scissors <laughs> Now it comes to sexing uh, the salafugid. Well, according to what I've seen from arachnophiliac.info site, uh, the way to tell 
if solifuges are males or females is by two ways. Well, the first way is to examine the body, and that really comes with a fully mature uh, adult. As you probably know, uh, males, as typically seen in tarantulas, they do have longer legs, they are generally smaller bodied than the females, and they're going to have slender um, chlorocyri. Females, on the other hand, are going to have enormous uh, chlorocyri. They're going to be much more bigger bodied and much more shorter legs. However, with sexing a solifugid, you see this organ called the flagellum, uh, which is over here. Now, if you do see flagellum over here, then you have a male. And if you don't see them, then you have a female. It's really not really, <laughs> it's really hard to say, but uh, from what they say, uh, let me see. They're not sexually dimorphic, of course. Males can be identified by the whip-like structures on the dorsal side of the chlorocyri, which is called the flagellum. His legs are longer, the jaws are thinner, and strongly toothed as the female. Of course, it makes sense. So, if we go to um, my specimen, um, I really don't see the flagellum anywhere, so I'm pretty much 65 or 70 percent sure that this might be a young female. Okay, so now it comes to the question of the longevity of the camel spiders. Do they stand up to the many years of teas? Unfortunately, they don't. Uh, it's really hard to say how long uh, camel spiders live. Um, pretty much some people can actually keep them for about a year and some people can keep it up to a couple of months. Again, it really depends on the size that you're getting. Uh, if you get a really huge specimen, they probably are going to be very old and according to pet bug site uh, they only live about two to three months left in captivity uh, sizes like this I could probably assume maybe about a year or two then then I'm not really sure uh, tarantula Canada doesn't really have great luck in keeping these species um, they were able to keep one up alive for about six weeks before it died so I'm testing to see whether or not I can do a little bit better. So far it's uh, November 25th, that's when I got it, and January 6th is about a month later. I seem to be doing pretty much okay. Okay, so I forgot to mention about the prices of these camel spiders. That's kind of important for the viewers. Well, camel spiders, again, it really depends on the species and the type of it you're getting, but for the G. Grantee, uh, I would say typically $50 seems to be uh, the most uh, accurate price. Uh, this is actually what I paid for it at the expo. Uh, I got this one from Tarantula Canada that got it from an import company called uh, Reptile Amazon. And this is how I came across it. And unfortunately with these um, camel spiders, they're occasionally imported so you don't really see them that often. Um, you probably couldn't ask maybe your online tea dealer to see if they can order one for you as I frequently do with uh, Tarantula Canada but this was a pure surprise that I actually found one at the expo okay so now for temperaments of these species well uh, the temperament even though that they're non venomous they don't have venom you do have to be careful with camel spiders because they can actually be very dangerous in terms of their fast moving capabilities as well as their super defensive behavior. So I'm going to prod mine to show you how she acts. Okay. So over here, this is your typical threat posture that you would seen from uh, solifugids. Um, I certainly do not recommend handling them because they can bite. 
and with some species uh, they have very powerful um, jaws and for certain large females they can actually draw blood just like you, your pendinus imperator if they pinch too hard so I do not suggest handling uh, these uh, spiders or solifugids sorry proper turn John okay so now for the care requirements of the Campbell spider are they very easy to take care of or are they very difficult well even though that they're very challenging to own because of their short lifespans, they're actually quite simple to take care of. And they're very similar uh, in care to a desert ha hairy scorpion, the Hadrurus arizonensis. Now, there's two things. Well, they do come from the e deserts of Egypt, so we should know two things. One, you need to keep it very warm and you need to keep it very dry. So, this is what I recommend. So they need warm climates. So basically keep them around 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and cool it off to at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit during the nighttime because you do need to mimic their natural climate so that way they have a sense of day and night. Now, if you have heat troubles, uh, I would recommend buying you know, a simple room heater, as you've probably seen in my videos. Right now, it's not really on because I have central heating. And as I explained in my other Mythbuster video, I do get heat naturally from, from the heating system. And during the summer, it's the warmest room in the house. So this is perfect for my collection. Now, if you can't keep your house or your room more than 70 degrees, then it's probably not suggested to get one because they can get cold pretty easily and they could probably die. Now, humidity, you absolutely do not need to miss them at all because they don't like it and you can actually kill them. The only source of humidity that they can get is from their food. And ultimately, you can actually offer a very, very small water dish uh, as you see here, I have to fill it with water. Just fill it up with water maybe once a week and it will be fine. And I think that's it for the care sheet. Oh yes, um, a critter keeper like this should be okay for it. This is a normal um, standard size critter keeper that you can get for your pet store. Uh, this one is by Hagen. This is called the Fenarium. It's got just the amount of ventilation that it needs. And for substrate, I don't use Eco Earth because it's too acidic for them and it's too moist. So this is why I actually bought some sand for it. And this is the, exactly what I bought from the expo. I got a pack like this for $11. Uh, the Repti Sand, the Black Sand. One, it's called the Midnight Black. I chose it because it really show, really stands out the tea. And you do need to put a fair amount, maybe like around three to four inches, because this tea can burrow. And you should offer it a hide. I use a PCV pipe that you can get from your local hardware store. And the camel spider can go hide as he chooses. Okay, and I do need to do some maintenance, removing all these uh, dead crickets from the last feeding video. Okay, breeding, as I mentioned before, unfortunately there's no breeding information available on camel spiders. I looked all over arachnid boards and other forums, I could not find anything. Um, and recommendations, uh, definitely do not recommend it for a first time owner. Even though they're not venomous, you do need to research them. Uh, they do move very fast and they can be very aggressive and also not recommended if um, you have trouble uh, heating your room or keeping the room at a certain temperature because it might not be good for them. But other than that, it's a pretty good deal and I'll document how long it'll last in my, ca in my care. So far it's doing pretty good, however, uh, my camel spider is showing signs a bit of weakening uh, as you probably saw in the last feeding video I had to feed it uh, by tongs because it's unable to catch the um, crickets but I guess uh, it will be fine yeah 
All right, everyone, so that's my video. Unfortunately, <laughs> it may not be the best one, but it's pretty much uh, as good as information that I can find on the camel spider because unfortunately, there's not much information available. So, gotta work what I have. All right, so next time, I'm gonna go over uh, another tarantula and I will touch up on, hmm, let's see which ones that I haven't done yet. There's a couple that I haven't done yet. Yeah, this one right here. Next MythBuster video will be on Saturday and I will go over the Vitalius Sorokabai as well as the other members of this genus. So hope you enjoyed this video everyone and thanks for watching.